Chapter 17 The Arch of Third According to the assertion of Bezalbub, our sun neither lights nor heats. In order, my dear Hassan, that you should meanwhile have an approximate representation also of just how far that function called the instinctive sensing of reality, which is proper to every three brain of being of the whole of our great universe, is already entirely lacking in the presences of the three central beings breeding on the planet Earth, and especially in those of the most recent periods. It will be enough to begin with, I think, if I explain to you only about how they understand and explain to themselves the causes why they periodically proceed on their planet those cosmic phenomena which they call daylight, darkness, heat, cold, and so on. Oh, without exception, of the three centered beings of that planet who have attained the age of a responsible being, and even those many and various wise acrings existing there which they call sciences, are categorically certain that all the set phenomena arrive on their planet completely, so to say, ready-made directly from their own sun. And as Mullah Nasser Adam would say in such cases, no more hokey pokey about it. What is most peculiar in this case is that, except for certain beings who existed before the second Transalpanian perturbation there, absolutely no doubt whatever concerning this certainty of theirs has ever as yet crept into a single one of them. Not only has not a single one of them, having a reason which, though strange, has nevertheless some resemblance to sane logic, ever yet doubted the causes of the said phenomena, but not a single one of them has manifested concerning these cosmic phenomena even that strange special property of their common psyche which also became proper to the three brain beings of that planet alone, and which is called to fantasize. Having said these last words, Bezabab, after a little while, with a bitter smile, continued to talk as follows. You, for instance, have the normal presence of a three brain being, and within your presence, there is intentionally implanted from without Oskiano, or as they say there on the earth, education, which is founded on a morality based solely on the commandments and indications of the uni being himself, and the most holy individuals near to him. And yet, if you should chance to be there among them, you would be unable to prevent the process in yourself of the being nerhetrobu, that is, the process, which again there on the earth is called irrepressible inner laughter. That is to say, you would not be able to restrain yourself from such laughter if in some way or another they were suddenly clearly to sense and understand, without any doubt whatever, that not only does think nothing like light, darkness, heat, and so on, come to their planet from their sun itself, but that their supposed source of heat and light is itself almost always freezing cold like the hairless dog of our highly esteemed Mullah Nasser Adam. In reality, the surface of their source of heat, like that of all the ordinary suns of our great universe, is perhaps more co covered with ice than the surface of what they call their North Pole. Surely this hearth of heat itself would rather borrow its heat, if only a little, from some other source of cosmic substance then send a part of its own heat to any other planet, especially to that planet which, though 
it belongs to its system. Yet in consequence of the splitting off from it of a whole side become a lopsided monstrosity and is now already a source of offensive shame for that poor system ours. But do you yourself know, my boy, in general how and why in the atmosphere of certain planets during troubled proto agocratic processes they perceive those Kazazabak, Dazak, Tainola, Pashkapur, and other such phenomena, which your favorites call daylight, darkness, cold, heat, and so on. Better but past her son. If you don't clearly understand, I shall explain this also to you a little. Although I have promised to explain to you only later all the fundamental laws of world creation and world maintenance in detail, yet the necessity here has arisen here to touch upon, if only briefly, the questions concerning these cosmic laws without waiting for that special talk I promised. And this is necessary in order that you may be able better to take in all that we are now talking about, and also in order that what I have already told you may be transubstantiated in you in the right way. It is necessary to say, first of all, that everything in the universe, both the intentionally created and the later automatically arisen, exists and is maintained exclusively on the basis of what is called the common cosmic trobo auto agocratic process. This most great common cosmic trobo auto agocratic process was actualized by our endless uni beings when our most great and most holy Son Absolute had already existed, on which our all gracious endless creator had and still has the chief place of his existence. This system, which maintains everything arisen and existent, was actualized by our endless creator in order that what is called the exchange of substances or the reciprocal feeding of everything that exists might proceed in the universe and thereby that the merciless Herapath might not have its maleficent effect on the Sun Absolute. This same most great common cosmic trobo auto egocratic process is actualized always and in everything. On the basis of the two fundamental, fundamental cosmic laws, the first of which is called the fundamental first degree sacred Hapta Parashino, and the second, the fundamental first degree sacred Triya Mazikano. Owing to these two fundamental sacred cosmic laws, there first arise from the substance called etherochromon, under certain conditions, what are called crystallizations, and from this crystallization, but later, and also under certain conditions, there are formed various large and small, more or less independent, cosmic definite formations. It is just within and upon these cosmic definite formations that the processes of what are called the involution and evolution of the already formed concentrations and also of the set crystallizations take place, of course, also according to the two set fundamental sacred laws. And all the results obtained from those processes in atmosphere and further, by means of these atmospheres themselves, blend and go for the actualizing of the said exchange of matters for the purposes of the most great common cosmic 
Drogo Otto E. Grad. Ether Quinol is that prime source substance with which the whole universe is filled and which is the basis for the arising and maintenance of everything existing. Not only is this ether quinol the basis for the arising of all cosmic concentrations without exception, both large and small, but also all cosmic phenomena in general proceed during some transformation in this same fundamental cosmic substance as well as during the processes of the involution and evolution of various crystallizations or as your favorites say, of those active elements, which have obtained and still continue to obtain their prime arising from this same fundamental prime source cosmic substance. Bear in mind here that it is just because of this that the mentioned objective science says that everything without exception in the universe is material. You must also know further that only one cosmic crystallization existing under the name omnipresent Okidana obtains its prime arising, although it also is crystallized from ether quinol, from the three holy source of the sacred Theomalogos, that is, from the emanation of the Most Holy Sun Absolute. Everywhere in the universe, this omnipresent Okidano, or omnipresent active element, takes part in the formation of all both great and small arising, and is, in general, the fundamental cause of most of the more cosmic phenomena and, in particular, of the phenomena proceeding in the atmospheres. In order that you may be able to understand, at least approximately, concerning this omnipresent Okidano also, I must tell you, first of all, that the second fundamental cosmic law, the sacred Triamazam Kino, consists of three independent forces that is to say, this sacred law manifests in everything, without exception, and everywhere in the universe, in three separate independent aspects. And these three aspects exist in the universe under the following denominations. The first, under the denomination, the holy affirming. The second, the holy denying, and the third, the holy reconciling. And this is also why, concerning this sacred law and its three independent forces, the said objective science has, among its formulations, especially concerning this sacred law, the, fo the following a law which always flows into a consequence and becomes the cause of subsequent consequences and always functions by three independent and quite opposite characteristic manifestations latent within it in properties neither seen nor sensed. Our sacred Theomerd Malogos also, that is, the prime emanation of our most holy Sun Absolute acquires just this same lawfulness at its prime arising and during its further actualizations gives results in accordance with it. And so, my boy, the omnipresent Okidano obtains its prime arising in space outside of the most holy Sun Absolute itself. From the blending of these three independent forces into one, and during its further evolutions, it is correspondingly changed in respect of what is called the vivifyingness of vibrations, according to its passage through what are called the 
stop kinders, or gravity centers of the fundamental common cosmic sacred head heptapavara shinob. I repeat, among the number of other already definite cosmic crystallizations, the omnipresent Okidanog unfailingly always participates in both large and small cosmic formations. Wherever and under whatever external surrounding conditions they may arise in the universe. This common cosmic unique crystallization or active element has several peculiarities proper to this element alone, and it is chiefly owing to these peculiarities proper to it that the majority of cosmic phenomena proceed, including among other things, the same phenomena that take place in the atmosphere of certain planets. Of these peculiarities proper to the omnipresent active element alone, there are several. But it is enough, for the theme of our talk, if we become acquainted just with two of them. The first peculiarity is that when a new cosmic unit is being concentrated, then the omnipresent active element does not blend as a whole with the new arising, nor is it transformed as a whole in any definite corresponding place. As happens with every other cosmic crystallization in all the set cosmic formations, but immediately on entering as a whole into any cosmic unit, there immediately occurs in it what is called dark room. That is to say, it is dispersed into the three fundamental sources from which it obtained its prime arising. And only then do these sources, each separately, give the beginning for an independent concentration of three separate corresponding formations within the given cosmic unit. And in this way, this omnipresent active element actualizes, at the outset, in every such new arising, the sources for the possible manifestation of its own sacred law of Triya Maza Kyamkamro. It must without fail be noticed also that in every cosmic formation, the set separate sources, both for the perception and for the further utilization of this property of the omnipresent active element, for the purpose of the corresponding actualizing, exist and continue to have the possibility of functioning, as long as the given cosmic unit exists. And only after the said cosmic unit has been completely destroyed do these holy sources of the sacred Triamaza Kano, localized in the omnipresent active element Okidano, reblend and they are again transformed into Okidano, but having now another quality of vivifyingness of vibrations. As regards the second peculiarity of the omnipresent Okidano, equally proper to it alone, and which it is also necessary for us to elucidate just now for the given theme of our talk. You will be able to understand about that only if you know something concerning one fundamental cosmic second degree law existing in the universe under the denomination of the sacred Aue. And this cosmic law is that there proceeds within every arising large and small, when in direct touch with the em emanations either of the sun absolute itself or of any other sun, what is called remorse. That is a process when every part that has arisen from the results of any one holy source of the sacred Trimaza Kamro, as it were, revolts and criticizes the former unbecoming perceptions and the manifestations at the moment of another part of its whole, a part obtained from the results 
of another holy source of the same fundamental sacred cosmic law of Shraya Mazamkano. And this sacred process, Ayuya, or remorse, always proceeds with the omnipresent active element of Kidanok also. The peculiarity of this latter during this sacred process is that while the direct action either of the sacred Theo Merma Logos or the emanation of any ordinary sun is round about the whole of its presence, this active element is dispersed into its three prime parts, which then exist almost independently. And when the said direct action ceases, these parts blend again and then continue to exist as a whole. Here you might as well, I think, be told, by the way, about an interesting fact I noticed, which occurred in the history of their existence concerning the strangeness of the psyche of the ordinary three framed beings of that planet which has taken your fancy, in respect of what they call their scientific speculations. And that is, that during the period of many of my many century observation and study of their psyche, I had occasion to constate several times that though science appeared among them almost from very beginning of their rising, and it may be said periodically, like everything else there, rose to a more or less high degree of perfection, and that though during these and other periods, many millions of three brainy beings called their scientists must have arisen and been again destroyed. Yet, with the single exception of a certain Chinese man named Shun Kyu Tez, about whom I shall tell you later in detail, not once has the thought entered the head of a single one of them there that between these two cosmic phenomena which they call emanation and radiation, there is any difference whatever. Not a single one of those sorry scientists has ever thought that the difference between these two cosmic processes is just about the same as that which the highly esteemed Mula Nasser Adam once expressed in the following words. They are as much alike as the beard of the famous English Shakespeare and the no less famous French Armagnac. For the further clarification of the phenomena taking place in the atmospheres and concerning the omnipresent active element in general, you must know and remember this also, that during the periods when, owing to the sacred process, a Ua Dachlon proceeds in the Okidano, then there is temporarily released from it the proportion of the pure, that is, absolutely unblended ethrochrono, which unfailingly enters into all cosmic formations and there serves, as it were, for connecting all the active elements of these formations. And afterwards, when its three fundamental parts re-blend, then the set proportion of etherochrono is re-established. Now, it is necessary to touch also, of course again only briefly, on another question, namely, what relation the omnipresent active element Okidano has to the common presence of beings of every kind, and what are the cosmic results actualized owing to it? It is chiefly necessary to touch upon this question because you will then have still another very striking and illuminating fact for the better understanding of the difference between the various brain systems of beings, namely, the system called one brain, two brain, and three brain. 
Know first that, in general, every such cosmic formation called brain receives its formation from those crystallizations, the affirming source for whose arising, according to the sacred Trimazalkano, is one or another of the corresponding holy forces of the fundamental sacred Trimazalkano, localized in the omnipresent of Kidano. And the further actualizing of the same holy forces proceed by means of the presences of the beings, just through those localizations. I shall sometime in the future especially explain to you about the process itself of the arising of these corresponding being brains in the presences of beings. But meanwhile, let us talk, though not in detail, about the results of the omnipresent Okidano actualizes by means of these being brains. The omnipresent active element Okidano enters into the presences of beings through all the three kinds of being food. And this proceeds because, as I have already told you, this same Okidano obligatorily participates in the formation of all kinds of products which serve as all three being foods and is always contained in the presence of these products. And so, my boy, the chief peculiarity of the omnipresent Okidano in the given case is that the process of Dachron proceeds in it within the presence of every being also but not from being in contact with the emanations of any large cosmic concentration. But the factors for this process in the presences of beings are either the result of the conscious process of park job duty on the part of the beings themselves about which processes I shall also explain to you in detail later, or of that process of grey nature herself, which exists in the universe under the name Kirku no Nananian actualization, which process means the obtaining of the required totality of vibrations by adaptation. This latter process proceeds in beings absolutely without the participation of their consciousness. In both cases, when Okidano enters into the presence of a being and the process of Dachron proceeds in it, then each of its fundamental parts blends with those perceptions which correspond with it according to what is called kindred vibrations and which are present in the being at the moment, and further, these parts are concentrated upon the corresponding localization, that is, upon the corresponding brain. And these blendings are called being imposakri. It is necessary to notice further that these localizations or brains in being serve not only as apparatuses for the transformation of corresponding cosmic substances for the purposes of the most great common cosmic trogo auto ego craft, but also as the means for beings whereby their conscious self-perfecting is possible. This latter aim depends upon the quality of the presence of the being imposakri concentrated or as is otherwise said, deposited upon the said corresponding being brains. Concerning the qualities of being imposakri, there is among the direct commandments of our all embracing endlessness even a special commandment, which is very strictly carried out by all three brained beings of our great universe and which is expressed in the following words. Always guard against such perceptions as may soil 
the purity of your brains. Three brain beings have the possibility personally to perfect themselves. Because in them, there are localized three centers of their common presence or three brains, upon which afterwards, when the process of dark room proceeds in the omnipresent Okidana, the three holy forces of the sacred Triamaza Kano are deposited and acquire the possibility for, fur for their further, this time, independent actualizings. Just in this is the point, that the beings having this three brain system can, by the conscious and intentional fulfilling of being part of duty, utilize from this process of dark form in the omnipresent Okidano, is three holy forces for their own presences and bring their presences to what is called the Sikronulazan Krinian state. That is to say, they can become such individuals as have their own sacred law of Trimaza Kamno and thereby the possibility of consciously taking in and quoting in their common presence all that holy which incidentally also aids the actualizing of the functioning in these cosmic units of objective or divine reason. But the great terror of it, my boy, lies just in this, that although in those three brain beings who have interested you and who breed on the planet Earth, they arise and are present in them, up to the time of their complete destruction, these three independent localization, or three being brains, through which separately all the three holy forces of the sacred Triamazam Kamo, which they might also utilize for their own self-perfecting, are transformed and go for further corresponding actualizations. Yet, chiefly on account of the irregular conditions of ordinary being existence established by them themselves, these possibilities beat their wings in vain. It is interesting to note that the said being brains are found in the same parts of the planetary body of these three brain beings who arise on the planet Earth as in us, namely, 1. The brain predetermined by grey nature for the concentration and further actualizing of the first holy force of the sacred Trimaza Kamno, called the Holy Affirming, is localized and found in the head. 2. The second brain, which transforms and crystallizes the second holy force of the sacred Trimaza Kamno, namely the holy denying, is placed in their common presence, also as in us, along the hall of their back in what is called the spinal column. 3. But as regards the place of concentration and source for the further manifestation of the third holy force of the sacred Triya Mazam Kano, namely the holy reconciling. The exterior form of this being brain in the three brain of beings there bears no resemblance whatever to ours. It must be remarked that in the primordial three brain of beings there, this said being brain was globalized in the same part of their planetary body as in us, and had an exterior form exactly similar to our own, but for many reasons which you will be able to understand for yourself during the course of my further talks. Grey nature was compelled, little by little, to regenerate this brain 
and to give it the form which it now has in the contemporary beings. This being brain in the contemporary three brain of beings there is not localized in one common mass as is proper to the presences of all the other three brain of beings of our great universe, but is localized in parts according to what is called specific functioning. And each such part is localized in a different place of their whole planetary body. But although in its exterior form, this being center of theirs has now variously placed concentrations. Nevertheless, all its separate functionings are correspondingly connected with each other. So that the sum total of these scattered parts can function exactly as in general it is proper for it to function. They themselves call these separate localizations in their common presences nerve nodes. It is interesting to notice that most of the separate parts of this being brain are localized in them just in that place of their planetary body where such a normal being brain should be, namely, in the region of their breast, and the totality of these nerve nodes in their breast, they call the solar plexus. And so, my boy, the process of Dachlum in the omnipresent Ogidano proceeds in the presence of each of these favorite of yours, and in them also. All its three holy forces are blended independently with other cosmic crystallizations and go for the corresponding actualizations, but as chiefly owing to the already mentioned abnormal conditions of being existence gradually established by them themselves, they have entirely ceased to fulfill being part job duty. Then, in consequence of this, none of those holy sources of everything existing, with the exception of the denying source alone, is transubstantiated for their own presences. The crystallizations arising in their presences from the first and from the third holy forces go almost entirely for the service only for the common cosmic, trogo auto ego cratic process. While for the coating of their own presences, there are only the crystallizations of the second part of the omnipresent Okidano, namely, of the whole, wholly denying. And hence it is that the majority of them remain with presences consisting of the planetary body alone, and thus are, for themselves, destroyed forever. As regards all the peculiarities proper to the omnipresent, everywhere penetrating active element Okidanok alone, and also as regards the further results which these peculiarities actualize, you will have a complete representation of them only after I shall have explained to you in more or less detail, as I have already promised, about the fundamental laws of world creation and world maintenance. But meanwhile, I shall tell you about those elucidating experiments concerning this omnipresent cosmic crystallization at which I was personally present. But I must tell you that I was an eyewitness of these said elucidating experiments, not on that planet Earth which has taken your fancy, nor did your favorites make them, but on the planet Saturn, where they were made by that three-brained being, who during almost the whole period of my exile in that solar system was my real friend, about whom I recently promised to tell you a little more in detail.